What's going on guys? So today I'm just bringing you another memory related video. This is going to be on this kind of rare, for me at least, I've never had a Hynix AJR ICs on a memory uh, kit. And this is just what this here is. Um, this is a 16 gigabit kit. Um, and it is single rank. Also, uh, it's a A3 PCB layout. Um, I don't have any issues with the um, the fact that it is a single rank kit um, versus a dual rank kit. It perform it performs really well at 3,800 mega transfers per second. Um, I have tried this kit on a B450. Um, it was a, what was it? Uh, Asus Tough B450M. Pro S motherboard, it overclocked like a dream, 3800 MHz, same um, timings that you're about to see here in the video. I've also tried it on a uh, Asus B550 Strix E motherboard, or I think I said that incorrectly, but you get the point. I've also tried it on my new um, X570 Tomahawk uh, motherboard with different CPUs, uh, 5900X, 5700X and a 5600 and all these memory controllers were able to push this to 3800 megahertz with surprisingly good timings um, particularly the sub timings so yeah you can pick this up for about a hundred bucks today uh, in the US and the country where I live today they actually want closer to two hundred dollars for this kit which I don't think you should be buying this for 200 bucks but um, is it worth it the a hundred dollars or around around a hundred bucks yeah absolutely this is a great fantastic kit very compatible uh, very easy to overclock so yeah let's go ahead and get into the video and all right guys here is the kit itself as you can see pretty nice looking yeah Okay, it looks pretty sexy um <laughs> i've never been a fan of rgb man that's just not my thing but um yeah i kind of you know don't mind this this stuff anymore um there you can kind of see some of the specs of this kit hopefully the camera is uh yeah zooming in correctly um so we're gonna be trying it on this uh, Tomahawk, this is a X570 Tomahawk motherboard with a 5900X and a RTX 4080 graphics card. Um, but um, this is going to be a little different. I want to kind of go over how to overclock memory properly because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that um, are kind of sketchy or you know feeling a little bit nervous about memory overclocking but you know what it's rather easy if you take the proper steps so I want to go over that today um, and mostly how to reset your BIOS in case your computer locks up and you know while you're memory overclocking um, the easiest way to go would be to if uh, this is kind of a different layout because this case came with a with a front panel header that connects everything into one header if you know what i mean it doesn't come with individual little pins or individual little uh, connectors um, but what you want to do basically is connect your reset switch from your front front panel you want to connect that to the header that resets your BIOS um, and of course you want to reset your BIOS while the computer is off you never want to do this with a computer on that would be a um, well I do it all the time but in some cases it might corrupt your BIOS so you always want to turn off your computer before you reset your BIOS it's just yeah just do it that way so yeah connect your reset switch to your uh, clear CMOS jumper on the motherboard That'll make your life a lot easier and um, yeah we'll, we'll take a look at the bios and i'll show you guys how i do my memory overclocking all right let's get into it all right guys here's the kit installed 
Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I like the RGB. Yeah, you know what? No, not really. I prefer the uh, stealthy look to computers, but uh, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to complain. It's, uh, it's a nice kit of ramps, so yeah. All right, so now we boot it into the BIOS. Let's go into the advanced mode. And I already have a profile for this kit here. Let's go ahead and enable that. and save all right so one thing that i kind of want to talk about is the um, um setting up a profile you know before you start doing your memory overclocking set up a profile with your fan curves already set up to how you want it to be um, and also your voltages for your ram like 1.4 volts your soc at 1.05 volts or 1.1 however you however you want to you know, do it depending on your motherboard and your your RAM. Um, and you want to save that profile here. You want to create it and name it whatever you want, default, whatever the case may be. Um, and then uh, reboot and uh, come back in here. You don't need to reboot, but I do it anyway. And uh, this is just the MSI layout, but it's the same concept for Asus and SROC, Gigabyte and whatnot. Um, so I'm just going to show you how, just briefly, how I do my overclocking. Um, obviously, I set the speed to 3800 megahertz, my FCLK to 1900, and I disable fast boot because I want memory training to uh, take place every time I turn on my computer, just for the sake of uh, stability. I know it adds a little bit of uh, you know time to your boot, but come on, you're not going to die from that. And uh, yeah, my voltages are already preset. I do this before I start doing any memory overclocking. Um, and the rule of thumb is, you know, if you're going to 3800 megahertz, 1.4 volts should be your starting point. If you need to add, you know, for stability, then you, you go up to say 1.42 or 1.45, depending on the kit of RAM that you have and if it even scales with voltage. So that's another thing you got to think about. Um, Hynix AJR does scale with voltage, so I know that, yeah, you'll need 1.4 for this. And the uh, the other voltages, um, like you see here, I set those manually before I start even overclocking. Uh, so now let me show you what I got going on here. So these are my primary. From, from, from here up, I call these my primaries, okay? Once I get, I get these... Uh, tuned to where I want them to be. I save, I reboot, I go into the in, into Windows and I run a quick test with uh, TM5, just a default, just a default profile that comes loaded already with TM5. Nothing special. Um, that, that usually takes about 10 minutes depending on how much RAM or how, how big your, your memory is. So 16 gigabytes should take about four to five minutes 32 should take double that um, once this passes if it does pass uh, then I move on to my uh, uh, TRFC or whatever falls you know follows next uh, MSI is a little different than Asus um, but here you have your TRFC first before your TFAW and your uh, RRDS and RRDLs um, <clears throat> excuse me so um, if this doesn't pass, obviously you're going to have to either increase voltage or you're going to have to loosen them up a little bit. Um, and uh, that's why I said hook up your resets, you know, your BIOS reset switch uh, to your clear CMOS jumper. So you don't have to be uh, using a screwdriver, or, you know, a flathead screwdriver to, or, uh, to, to reset um to make that connection in the jumper there or take out your battery you don't want to do that stuff so uh, once you're done uh, overclocking your memory and you got it all tuned up it passes and you know it's 100 stable or as stable as you can get it um, or were you happy then you can obviously take out you know or unplug the reset uh, switch jumper and just hook it up to where it should be on your motherboard 
Um, so yeah, so I test these here first. Then I go to my TRFC. I test my TRFC for stability. Uh, if it does pass, then I move on to my... Um, this right here, TWR, doesn't do much poor performance. I usually leave this on auto, but 20 is good. Um, uh, my WTRS and WTRLs, I test along with TWR. So these three here, I set manually, and I go into the into the desktop. I test. If it passes, then I move on to my uh, RRDS, RRDLs, and TFAW. My or for active windows, um, these uh, these right here I don't see. You know, most kits will do perfectly fine with four, six, and TFAW sixteen at thirty eight hundred megahertz. You may have to bump up the voltage a little bit, um, or maybe loosen up your TFAW. But four, six generally in every kit that I've tested from uh, E Revision, Micron to B Die, Samsung. Uh, you name it, this has always been 4.6 or 4.4 for Samsung B-Die. Um, TCWL should be your TCL, or you can set it lower if you want to, but I set it to my whatever my cast latency is. And CKE, I set it to 1. My uh, RDRD, uh, uh, or in short, my uh scl and my r s c l whatever um these two here i set to four my r d w r i set to eight my w r r d i set to one because that's where this kid is happy i lay i leave gear down mode on auto power down mode i disable and background swap i also disable um I set my proc ODT to 36. This is where this is happy, and I disable dynamic ODT and my RTT. I also disable that. My um, park, I leave on auto. And my driver strengths, I set my uh, I set it to 24, 20, 24, 24, and leave the rest on auto. And this is where this kit likes to be. So yeah that's it all right so one thing about tm5 of course you can test with uh memtest pro or memtest 86 um whatever you're choosing whatever whatever you like i like uh, tm5 and i'll show you what i mean here in a second so here yeah whatever get out of here get out of here get out of here okay i already said to run as um administrator so i don't know why i keep getting that but anyway um I re this is the quick test this is the default um configuration that is loaded when you first start tm5 but there are other configurations here what you need to do is go here find your folder where tm5 is located i'm going to stretch this here and here you have different configurations for testing your memory um, extreme and heavy is the two that you want for your final test so if we click on this here open this will shut down it'll open up again and now you're running extreme so onto 777 um, and this is what you want to use for testing your RAM once you got everything dialed in um, this one here is mostly to, to, to test your TRFC because TRFC is sensitive to uh, temperature so if it's not stable it'll show up here um, but yeah or you can use this for every single time that you change anything on your memory although it's going to take a while um you know if you want to go this route but this is the most secure way or guaranteed way that um your system or your memory overclocking is stable um if you don't want to run all three cycles because this will take about an hour and a half to two hours uh there's another thing that you can do 
you can go here and I believe I have it here yeah okay go to your folder where TM5 is installed see this folder right here go to bin and okay for example uh, this is my um, absolute um, profile you want to go to properties here change open with notepad okay click OK and what you can do here now is make changes to the number of cycles that you can run I'm gonna leave this alone for example you want to change instead of running all three cycles you want to change to one cycle you can do that just click one there save close now this will only run one cycle now you can do this for whenever you're testing individual um, like I, like how I do it for individual groups you can do this it'll take a little longer about 30 to 45 minutes but it is safer this way uh, and then when you're done with when you got everything all set up and your you you know all your timings how you like your memory to be then you can you can go back I think you already got the point I don't know why I keep doing this but <laughs> you can go back here and set it change it back to oops let me don't want to do that set it back to three so now it will run three cycles instead of just one there you go so that's how I test my memory I test it in groups I use the uh, default light uh, test to begin with um, but I have I have noticed the reason why I do it is because I have noticed that it even though it is fast it is a, a light test or a quick test I should say it it is pretty accurate it's it'll find if it's there's any weaknesses with your primary timings or your sub timings most of them um, it'll find it it'll find it within those first five or ten minutes uh, but to be more safe you want to run uh, the extreme uh, profile um, especially three cycles once you got everything dialed in or you can run one cycle for each group uh, and that'll give you you know more uh, certainty that your overclocking is going well okay guys I'm gonna leave the video here this turned out to be a lot longer than I wanted it to be but uh, I think that um, yeah this is this should answer a lot of the questions that I get on, on a lot of my memory videos like I get people saying oh you know I tried your settings it doesn't work or my system won't boot now with your settings well that has to do with your motherboard it has to do with your memory controller um, you know this is many factors but uh, by doing it this way here testing it in groups um, I find it to be more accurate more reliable don't just make changes to everything and then run them a test for stability because then you won't know where your weaknesses or where you're, where you're where are you getting your errors is it your TRFC is it your TCL is it voltage you won't know so you know test in groups at a time and that's all I got for now you guys take care I'll see you in the next one